Good evening, it's Thursday, January 30th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Amitha Sharma, in for Maya Trabolsi. A major development tonight in the spread of the coronavirus. The World Health Organization is now declaring the outbreak a global emergency. This, as San Diego health officials are monitoring a potential local case. More now from KPBS science and technology reporter Shalina Chatlani. Just hours this morning before the World Health Organization announced the coronavirus a global health emergency, the first case of person-to-person -person spread in the United States was announced. In mainland China, infected cases now number over 9,000, with 213 deaths. But when it comes to just how dangerous this virus really is, UC San Diego infectious disease expert Francesca Torriani says the mortality rate so far is relatively low when compared to other viruses like the flu, which has already caused over 8,000 deaths in the U.S. this season. Right now in California alone for this season, we've had, I think, approximately 150 deaths. Uh, and so that's, you know, nearly 90% of, of the deaths we've had uh, with coronavirus only occurring in California, right? Health officials are still figuring out how this virus, which comes from animals, works in humans. Not all household contacts, so close contacts, uh, acquire the, the disease. Um, and so it, it is effective, but not that effective. And also that uh, passengers on the same flights of, of uh, persons who were infected do not all get the disease. The risks of spreading in America are low, Toriani says, but data shows coronavirus appears to be an airborne illness that can spread through coughs and sneezes. So regulating person-to-person -person contact is key. That's why the World Health Organization declared a global emergency today. We don't know what sort of damage this virus could do if it were to spread in a country with a weaker health system. Toriani says people can protect themselves by staying away from those who have contracted the disease and follow practices like washing hands and covering their mouths when coughing. The San Diego patient under investigation still awaits results from the Centers for Disease Control. I think they may have an alternate diagnosis. So, so that's probably why they're still testing to make sure to exclude the coronavirus, but I think they might have a, a, an alternate uh, reason for this patient to be ill. Toriani says she's confident in the healthcare providers here and urges people not to be misled by misinformation spreading on social media. Shalina Chatlani, KPBS News. Coming up later in the show, one of the busiest cities in the world is turned into a virtual ghost town. Neighboring Hong Kong is feeling serious effects from the Chinese outbreak. We'll show you how life there has changed. Turning now to the impeachment trial, which could be over as soon as this weekend. As Camilla Bernal reports, it's unclear if there's enough Republican support to allow witness testimony. The senator from Pennsylvania. The senator from Montana. A new question every five minutes. Senator, thank you for that question. That's a good question. And each bringing senators closer to a vote on whether to consider witnesses for President Trump's impeachment trial. I have heard enough. I am ready to make that vote. But Democrats not letting go of what defense attorney Alan Dershowitz had to say on Wednesday. If a president does something which he believes will help him get elected in the public interest, that cannot be the kind of quid pro quo that results in impeachment. Lead impeachment manager Adam Schiff calling the argument constitutional madness. The only reason you make that argument is because you know your client is guilty. But Republicans still in lockstep with the defense. What he was talking about is rooting out corruption and fighting corruption and that that is in the public interest. And with that, the House managers are running out of time. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is expected to move rapidly to acquit the president if that vote on witnesses is defeated. They're going to just try to get out of this as quickly as they can. Camila Bernal, KPBS News. Three votes short.
That's how close the state Senate came to passing a sweeping change to the way homes are built in California. Senate Bill 50 was initially blocked last night. Another attempt today was also unsuccessful. SB 50 would change local zoning rules and allow some apartments to be built near transit centers, even in places designated for single-family homes. Supporters say it's a big change that's needed to make a dent in the state's housing shortage. Opponents, which include many city governments, say it goes too far. Where and how to build is a major issue in places like East County. In March, voters there will cast a vote on a new supervisor for the District 2 seat. Coming up later in the show, we meet the candidates looking to replace Diane Jacob as part of our KPBS special in-depth coverage of the March primary. A major effort is underway to stop human trafficking in our area. Authorities say there are thousands of victims here, many of them kids. So now a move is being made to help teachers spot the warning signs. More now from KPBS reporter Priya Sridhar. San Diego Unified, San Marcos, and Sweetwater Union High School districts received $45,000 from the San Diego Rotary Club today. The money will be split among the districts and used to help train 700 teachers within the next year on how to spot the signs of trafficking in their schools. If we can help teachers and their students look out for other people who might be vulnerable to that, then we've done our job here today. The advocacy group San Diego Trafficking Prevention Collective developed a half-day curriculum for teachers and students from 5th to 12th grade. It's designed to bring awareness about trafficking to San Diego families. The educators say the teaching modules will help students and teachers spot red flags. A, a typical red flag may be multiple cell phones. So maybe the, the student has two cell phones and they're handing when you suggest calling home um, or that you take the phone away and so they may see that as oh they just have two phones maybe their mom has or something and now they can press into it a little bit more. County officials say human trafficking is a 810 million dollar industry and that most of the San Diego victims are U.S. citizen teenagers. Priya Shreether, KPBS News. No deal yet in Chula Vista over teacher pay. Last night, we showed you the walkout stage by teachers from the Chula Vista Elementary School District. Today, both sides spent several hours trying to reach a deal. The teachers union president says the district is considering removing limits on class sizes to pay for 2% raises. Both sides will take a break and resume negotiations next month. The nation's top military official is defending comments made by President Trump about troops recently injured in Iraq. But I'd like to stress that we take this issue very seriously. DOD is a leading contributor in the treatment and research of brain-related trauma. We do everything we can to identify, treat, and help our service members recover and return to duty. That's Secretary of Defense Mark Esper commenting on the number of troops injured in Iraq by missile strikes from Iran. The government now says 50 troops are diagnosed with traumatic brain injuries. Those include concussions. Initially, the Trump administration said there were no casualties. The president later downplayed the injuries, describing them as headaches. As we know, many of our vets return from service suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. Technology developed in Southern California is helping with the healing process. Jason Allen shows us how it's being rolled out nationally. Maybe they were on a crowded Iraqi street or maybe in a rural Afghan village. But for as many as 30% of veterans, something happened. They are hiding from to this day and the strong mind system is designed to take them back there. We're trying to help patients to confront and reprocess difficult emotional memories, but in a safe place. The system Dr. Skip Rizzo has developed for 15 years is being introduced to clinicians at the North Texas VA this week, so they can use it with their post-traumatic stress patients. Traditionally, they ask patients to imagine the scenario they're troubled by. Strong mind, as I found, puts them in the middle of it. What they could hear that day what the weather was like. And then we can, of course, blow stuff up. All of a sudden, things start to come back uh, because they've been trying to avoid thinking about it or talking to anybody about it. And once you break that seal, you start to hear more and more and more. It goes beyond what you see and what you could hear, even down to what you were holding that day 
or even what you were feeling that day. Charitable organization Soldier Strong has donated Strong Mind to 13 VAs, including three in Texas. And that real world use is expected to help develop the system even further. And I think we can move the needle forward, not just for veterans, but for the whole civilian sector and improve the lives of people that are constantly confronted by, you know, high stress. That was Jason Allen reporting. The VA says PTSD affects about 20% of Iraq and Afghanistan vets and about 30% of those who served in Vietnam. The family of Kobe Bryant gave its first statement since Sunday's deadly helicopter crash. Vanessa Bryant thanked fans for their support and announced a new foundation to help all affected families. Meanwhile, wreckage of the helicopter crash that killed nine people has been taken to Arizona. That's where investigators will take a closer look at the aircraft to try to determine a cause for the crash. A preliminary report is expected in the coming weeks. The last photograph of Bryant may have been taken by a 13-year-old boy. The young basketball player trains at the Mamba Sports Academy. He told Rachel Kent about how their paths crossed. There's a growing makeshift memorial to Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna. In front of the training facility, they and seven others were on their way to Sunday when they were killed in a helicopter crash. Since then, Mamba Sports Academy had been closed. Today, athletes young and old returned to train. Feeling just a bit nervous because I feel like everyone will be pretty like sad now that he's gone. The Laker legend inspired young talent while coaching his daughter Gianna's team. 14-year-old Ben Bass never got to meet Kobe in person, but 13-year-old Brady Smigel did here on Saturday during the Mamba Cup tournament. Such like a big influence to so much people just like gone. Brady tells us in between games he got a what's up and a fist bump from Kobe. Later he snapped this selfie as the Lakers star was passing by. Brady hoped Kobe would have time for a picture after the games so he waited in line. I was up and I saw his car like pull up like right over here and I was like Kobe can I get a quick picture with my couple of my friends and he was like I'll get you tomorrow you play here and I was like yeah 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 he just walked out I got that blurry picture and then he walked out he got in the car Brady was disappointed but he knew he would try again Sunday now he knows there won't be a next time so these pictures are precious to him I'm keeping those forever as long as I can I'm showing them to all my friends all my family so if anything happened to my phone or like my family's phone I had it somewhere just it's just, just so special to me that was Rachel Kim reporting. Last night, San Diego paid its own tribute to Kobe Bryant. The county administration building downtown was lit up in Lakers purple and gold. It matches similar displays done at arenas and landmarks around the world. The historic run continues for the San Diego State Aztecs, and they made it look easy last night in New Mexico. With the rebound, numbers for the Aztecs. Wetzel with the dunk. Nice on time on the Aztecs put this one away early, scoring 17 unanswered points. They cruised to an easy win. Now 22-0, the unbeaten Aztecs turn their attention to a big weekend at home. KPBS reporter Matt Hoffman has more. Mitchell can shoot the three and bangs one home. I definitely realized, of course, that you know we're 22-0, but at the same time, I don't think it's really hit me yet that, that you know, we're in this moment and it's just so surreal. San Diego State right back at it. K.J. Fagan again. You know, I just think it's a great time to be an Aztec. The energy around campus is just electric. SDSU is off to their best start ever in school history. This Saturday, they look to stay undefeated and will be retiring former Aztec and current NBA star Kawhi Leonard's jersey. I think it'll be one of the best environments we've ever had here. Windy weather will calm down as we head into the weekend, which could include a small chance of rain. Justin Pavic has our forecast. Now we continue to talk about the winds, especially throughout uh, San Diego uh, Valley locations and throughout the San Diego County mountains. Over the higher terrain, it will be breezy and those high profile vehicles again going to be talking about that wind along I-8. Warm temperatures prevailing the next couple of days, but as a front comes into play Sunday night, you know, some big changes coming up, perhaps even 
a little bit of wet weather. We're not talking about that right now. What we are talking about still the wind and there are wind advisories out away from the coast as I mentioned through the valley and especially over the mountainous terrain as the winds continue to come down from the north and the east wind advisories out right through tomorrow afternoon and throughout the San Diego County and toward the valley. We're going to be looking at some of those winds gusting 30 to 40 miles per hour, but over the uh, San Diego County mountains could see winds gusting over 50 and again it's going to be tricky here along portions of the eight. Overnight low temperatures for tonight dropping down to 52 in San Diego, Oceanside 43, Ramona dropping into the mid 40s and Mount Laguna falling off to 38. Sunshine again for tomorrow. Again, highest winds just away from the shoreline, especially as you start to climb in elevation. And those winds will begin to slowly subside as we work our way throughout the latter half of your Friday. And then look at the pattern flip. We're going to talk about a front coming down through the Golden State. And again, this is going to be providing us with the potential for a shower Sunday night and then definitely some cooler temperatures as we go down the road. And you'll see those here as we venture into Monday at the coast and also Tuesday. So look at that change here. It's warm again to Friday into Saturday, but uh, some cooler conditions indeed later on this weekend into Monday. Notice inland a big drop as well. We go from the 80s into Saturday back to near 60 Monday and Tuesday mountainous terrain falling into the 30s Monday and Tuesday. So indeed quite cool over the desert locations. A big drop as well. 70s turn into 50s from Sunday into Tuesday. So, so indeed some big changes coming up over the next several days. For KPBS News, I'm meteorologist Justin Pavic. Keep an eye on your mailbox. Californians will be getting their mail-in ballots in the coming days. At the top of the ticket, one candidate holds a strong lead in a new poll. KQED found 30% of California Democrats say they will vote for Bernie Sanders in the March primary. That's nearly double the support for Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden. An LA Times poll this week also gave Sanders an edge, though by a lesser margin. Our special coverage of the March primary includes a focus on East County. After 28 years, Diane Jacob is leaving the Board of Supervisors. Maya Trabulsi looks at who is competing for the District 2 seat. District 2 is the largest district in San Diego County, sprawled across 2,000 square miles from the southern border to as far north as Julian, from the Imperial County border to as far west as San Diego State. Since 1992, it's been represented by incumbent supervisor Diane Jacob. But term limits mean she's on her way out. I really believe that being supervisor is like being the mayor of East County. And after serving uh, such a long tenure, Jacob won't go contact. without throwing her weight behind her pick for successor. Diane Jacob has about a half a million dollars left in her campaign account. Uh, she's made it very clear in the media uh, that she will spend every dime of that. Uh, to make sure that I'm elected. Jacob has passionately endorsed Steve Voss, who is currently serving his second term as mayor of the city of Poway and as chairman of the San Diego Association of Governments. I'll be following in Supervisor Jacob's footsteps. I think that's why she has endorsed me. Uh, she sees how I approach uh, the job of being mayor, that I'm accessible. Uh, that I take my constituents' needs and concerns very seriously. Voss hasn't had a long history in politics, and the Grammy Award-winning singer-songwriter, who's usually seen in public wearing a cowboy hat, may seem like an unlikely politician. But he says his experience in local government uniquely qualifies him to be what he calls the mayor of East County. Being a supervisor and being a mayor, there's an awful lot in common. Uh, and I've got a track record of getting things done. And, you know, I think a, a city that's generally considered to be the envy of every other jurisdiction in the county. Uh, and I think that's because we focus on the important stuff. We don't chase shiny objects. We get things done and we take care of our friends and neighbors. Voss says his priority is to keep his constituents safe from crime and fire, but also to improve housing. He drew criticism in December when Poway's water became contaminated by rain runoff, rendering it undrinkable for almost a week. Voss says that helped his candidacy rather than hurt it. Because folks saw a mayor who stepped up, took care of business, um, but within 12 to 18 hours we had water available, handed out you know, thousands and thousands of cases of water, and folks saw their mayor out on the front line and willing to talk about it and tell them what the reality was. So. 
uh, I think it helped me in the race. Another Republican candidate in the race is former state senator Joel Anderson, who has been officially endorsed by the Republican Party of San Diego. He is also a former president on the board of the Padre Dam Water District and a staunch adversary of Voss. During the Poway Boil Water Advisory, Anderson accused Voss of turning the city and the country into a third world country. KPBS reached out to Anderson for an interview about the race, but he was unavailable. In the hopes of flipping the district seat in 2020, the Democratic Party of San Diego has endorsed Rancho San Diego resident Kenya Taylor for the Board of Supervisors. Another unlikely politician, Taylor has a background as a licensed marriage and family therapist and is an executive committee member of the NAACP's San Diego branch. I'm the only candidate who has the expertise to manage the mental health crisis that we are seeing in our county. And unfortunately, this is the worst I've seen it in my lifetime. Taylor says she wants to make sure jails are not being used as the largest mental health program in the county. Among her other priorities, Taylor wants to focus on supporting small businesses, environmental issues like clean air and food. She says the large geographic size of District 2 means governing requires a one-size-does-not-fit-all approach. That 22-year-old student who's living in their car has a different need than the 84-year-old person who has a home that they retired in. She says she has donated over 10,000 hours for volunteer work and tries to imagine what she could do with a real budget to support those who want to improve their lives. Not to mention this would be the first time for us to make history. We've never had a woman of color, ever, in all of the districts. But that's not why I'm running. I'm running to make sure that we're safe in our areas. Although technically a nonpartisan seat, District 2 is historically a densely Republican district. Taylor said she's confident people don't care about what party a candidate is in. People care about how much gas will be. Where, where will they get their next meal? Are they able to buy medicine or do they buy medicine or food? Will they have quality child care? Those issues are so much bigger than a political party. Another contender for the seat is longtime lakeside resident, cattle rancher, and general contractor Brian Sesco. On his website, Sesco lists the nine to fivers as his supporters, the regular folk. He is a registered independent and says he hasn't had the time to meet and greet with politicians. And that, he says, is the point, calling himself Brian One-Term Sesco. He is relying on word of mouth of friends, neighbors, and social media for promotion. The last day to register to vote is February 18th. The primary election is on March 3rd. Maya Trabulsi, KPBS News. You can find all of our election coverage online and on our KPBS podcast. Tomorrow we look at the North County's 49th congressional seat, which was part of 2018's Blue Wave for Democrats. I'm Judy Woodruff. Tonight on the news hour, senators continue to put the prosecution and defense to the test, while the greater question of witnesses on impeachment looms. Coming up at 7 after evening edition on KPBS. Back to the story that led our newscast, the Wuhan coronavirus. It's now considered a global emergency by the World Health Organization. That's especially apparent in cities near the outbreak. Will Ripley shows us the scene in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, a city full of empty stores. This one has a line around the block. Go ahead, fair, so we got to. A three hour wait for surgical face masks. They give only one a pack for one person. Oh, yeah. Are you coming back tomorrow? Oh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. We need one, uh, more masks. Demand is high. Supplies are low. Stores are quickly running out. They seem not to have uh, anticipated the seriousness of the problem and that it, it came so quickly. The same Hong Kong leaders who tried to ban protesters from wearing masks to hide their faces now cover their own. The government is taking emergency measures to prevent a public health catastrophe, severely restricting travel from mainland China, the epicenter of the outbreak. Normally there would be a steady stream of people from mainland China coming through these now locked doors. High-speed rail service is suspended until further notice, and that's really having a knock-on effect because this adjacent mall, just like malls all over Hong Kong, pretty much deserted. 
Hong Kong has about 300 reasons not to take any chances. That's how many people died in the SARS outbreak 17 years ago in 2003. This neighborhood, Amoy Gardens, was ground zero. Are people living here scared that that could all happen again? I think all Hong Kong people were scared. Um, something like SARS would happen again in Hong Kong, all people. Those who lived through Hong Kong's darkest days describe psychological terror akin to 9-11, only stretched out for months. That fear of an invisible enemy has many heeding the government's advice. Stay inside, avoid crowds. If possible, work from home. It's almost easy to forget that we're in the middle of the Lunar New Year here. This is supposed to be one of Hong Kong's busiest tourism weeks of the year. But all we have are these decorations. All the public events have been canceled. The people are gone. More than seven months of protests emptied out hotels, stores, and restaurants. Now, it's even worse. Have you ever seen a, a Chinese New Year like this so slow? No, never. Since, never in your yeah, life? Since the 50 year, 60 year, I haven't seen for that. Sales are down 70%, he says. And this was supposed to be a good week. Hong Kong's economy was already on life support. Now, an even bigger worry for some, staying alive. Will Ripley, CNN, Hong Kong. And as always, you can find tonight's stories on our website, kpbs.org slash evening edition. Thank you for joining us and have a great evening.